Hello and welcome to this video on this thing here. This is yet another iFlight Quad, the third of the ones that I've been playing with recently. If you haven't already seen them, I've done a couple of other videos on a couple of other different models. The first one we had a look at on the channel was the ProTech 35. Then I had a look at the Helios 10, which is a whopping 10 inch model that actually uh, I really liked. Just wish these things had compasses and the potential for iNav and Ardu pilot. And this one is something called the Afterburner. It is built like a tank and the frame is very different. I can actually look at you through the arms. These kind of vertical arms and this design isn't new. It's something that was played with in the middle of the big multi-rotor boom. I think pretty much every type of four-armed quad design was tried at some point. But this is one that I just wanted to have a look at because it's quite unusual. It's kind of built like a flying tank. This thing weighs over 700 grams with the 6S battery that I've got on it here. O3 air unit inside. So I thought I would just give you an overview of what it is, how it's put together, and what's different about this one compared to some of the others. So in terms of the headlines for this, there are a few. First of all is that this is a pretty compact quad, even though it's your standard kind of five inch prop, it's 20% smaller footprint. That's because these are a little bit further in. They are not too worried about having obstructed airflow from the props onto the arms because these vertical arms that they've designed here allow the airflow to go through. Again, this isn't a new idea, but it's one that was played with a while ago. I also have this thing on the top called the Aeroshell. This is injection molded plastic, which is nice to see. There are some 3D printed pieces on here and that encloses the flight electronics and also provides a pretty robust enclosure for things like the camera and other pieces too. Under here is a GPS at the top, which is very nice to see for GPS rescue. And it gives a good solid mounting, nice and high for things like the FPV antenna too. The big difference with this, apart from the fact that we have kind of this tank looking center aero shell, are the arms. Now, rather than have just flat arms like you would have on a more traditional quad, these are these two struts that come out. Now, they are held in place by a couple of tabs underneath, and I'm interested to see how well they will survive tough landings. Hopefully the replacements are going to be easy to get your hands on because these actually are quite a nice idea. They do appear to be very rigid. They're reasonably lightweight. The carbon fiber seems a good quality and it does mean that the airflow from the props is going through mostly clean air underneath. Battery is mounted at the bottom, as you probably already spotted. I personally like that. It means that you can put whatever size battery on that you want. Not really sure why we are so excited about putting batteries on tops of quads all the time. This is how it started in the hobby and how we started building quads 10 odd years ago. So it's kind of fun to see that back. And it does mean that whatever battery you've got, 6S battery, should fit. They're claiming that this is designed to have the GoPro at the top and give a no props view. And that's probably the case. However, you are definitely gonna see the props and we'll test it in a minute and we'll take it flying in the actual O3 Air Unit camera here at the front. There is a massive amount of adjustment here in terms of um, up angle. So you can really get over to fly quickly and take advantage of all that extra airflow from the props in a very steep position. But I'm guessing if you have your action camera on the top and there's no battery to stop it being lent backwards, that means that you can fly without the props appearing in your video. L3 air unit is in here. It is hidden away at the bottom. I'll take it apart and show you what it looks like inside in a moment. The air 3 unit is just above where the battery is. And then you have the four in one ESC and the 722 base flight controller stack underneath the aero shell. So let me take it out the box and show you how it comes and go through the specs in a little bit more detail. Again, this is the Afterburner 5, a DJI O3 based HD quad running on 6S. Inside is the flight controller, which is a F722 Blitz unit paired with a 4-in-1 ESC, which is capable of 2 to 6S, 55 amp rating. Geometry is a true X and the frame is a 210 millimeter wheelbase. Motors on this are an X-ing 2 2207 1750 kV motor and they're paired with two sets, which is nice to see, of Gemfan 5.1 by 3.6 by 3 propellers. 
Weight without a battery, they're reckoning about 472 grams. This is actually what mine is weighing with the antenna on, but without an action camera. And it weighs about 700 grams with the battery. I'm flying it with here. It's not a particularly big battery. It's only 1400. Dimensions are 148 by 148 by 64 millimeters high. Maximum speed they're claiming is 160 kilometers an hour. That's probably possible on this kind of 6S with 5 inch props, but that does mean you're going to get quite banked over, which with the O3 camera means you're going to be looking at the ground unless you can figure out a way to increase the up angle. Hover time they're claiming is about 11 minutes with a 1400 milliamp hour battery, which I have here. And as I did say, there is a GPS here at the top in front of the antenna. So let's have a look at the beta flight setup as it is supplied. So we'll plug it in via the port on the side. Uh, there is a nice opening which allows you to easily access the USB port for the flight controller and we can have a look. Now this is tested from the factory. That's something that iFlight do with all of theirs. So there's something in the data flash which is nice to see. Let's go through this relatively quickly. So GPS is connected on UART4. Again, this is beta flight, so it's going to be rescue mode only. UART2 is looking like it's used for the serial receiver. UART1 looks like it's set up for the O3A unit on-screen display. Configuration, we have 8K and 4K gyro and PID loop frequencies, and this Evans 722 is only running about 32%, so quite happy. OSD's on, LED strips on, weirdly, even though there's no LED strip on it. Power and battery looks like this. Failsafe, oddly, is set to drop. If you're gonna put a GPS on this, why wouldn't you set it up for GPS rescue? That's kind of the whole point. PID tuning, I'll put a dump and diff below. You can go and have a look at them, see how it's set up. There isn't any expo, for example, set on things like the rate profile, but we'll see how it flies on the default configuration. Receiver is set for CRSF, uh, this is the Express LRS version on here. You probably spotted the little antennas on the ends of one of the arms. Modes, super basic. So most of you will want to come in here and play with that. OSD, also the layout is very cluttered. Everyone has their own particular preference for how they like the on-screen display. This one just looks like somebody's thrown up all over it. I would definitely come in here and move things around just so it fits with the other quads that you've got and you have the information that you need and not a load of other rubbish. Let me do a dump and diff, as I've mentioned, links below if you want to go and check those out. So before I've completely set this up, I thought it'd be interesting to see if I could take it apart a little bit to look inside. Now to get the top off, there are four screws, two on each side in these positions here, just above where the camera is and just by the side of where the antenna connects. And you also have to remove two of the screws from the bottom here that go up into these captive nuts. Once you've done that, this whole kind of top clamshell comes off and then we get a view of what's actually going on inside pretty standard stuff we have the f722 flight controller at the top and then we have the four in one escs with the wires coming down along these vertical arms into the motor with a little bit of protective tape over the top to keep them safe. Now, a couple of other things I've spotted in here. Uh, we obviously have a GPS, as we saw in the beta flight configuration. So that's where it is sat on the top. So this wouldn't be iNavable. Not sure you'd want to with something like this. Uh, then we have the antenna in a 3D printed piece. Lots of 3D printed pieces in here. One bit that's not 3D printed is the mount for some kind of action camera there at the top. Then we have the O3 camera at the front. Uh, the other thing I spotted is the Express LRS receiver is kind of nestled down here. Uh, that's great because that's going to allow me in a moment to power it three times to get it into buy mode. It's shipped with Express LRS version 3.3 on here. The only thing I'm not a fan of is if you look on the back, what they've done is they've just kind of heat shrinked the excess cable in here. Some of those radiuses are a little bit tight or tighter than I would like on these smaller coaxial cables. And then we have a horizontally mounted single antenna out here. I do wish that iFlight would use dual antennas diversity setups so that they could have two vertical antennas. I just think that's better for these kind of things. Underneath then, is the O3 air unit. Again, very tricky to get into the bind button for that. However, they have thoughtfully 
exposed via this little thing here, the USB connector. So it's not ideal because I, you know, this kind of arms in the way, it would be better to have had this connector at a slight angle in line with this so that you could get the connector on. So if I just grab a connector in here, it'll just about go in, but you're going to have to really pick the right connector so that you're not straining anything. So what's it like to fly? Well, it's hovering easily at about 30% throttle without an action camera installed and with a 1400 6S battery slung underneath. So lots of extra, extra poke here if you wanted to add something like a full-size GoPro. You're going to need something with a battery in because there isn't any power adapter on the top like on the things like the Helios 10. Very easy to control and very smooth. Even without the Expo set on the controls, it's a piece of cake to fly super smoothly. And that's what you really want out of something like this, where it's primarily aimed at those who want to get that kind of cinematic flying footage. Noise was a little less than expected. I'll shut up and you can hear it here. So not screaming by any stretch of the imagination, kind of the standard noise you would expect off a lower powered five inch quad. However, this is a capable six inch, so it's actually nice and quiet. Maybe part of that additional noise cancellation is coming from the fact that the air isn't hitting standard arms. I'm using about 500 milliamp hours out my battery about every four minutes. So I can get around 10 minutes out of a 1400 milliamp hour 6S battery. That's a lot less than the claimed 20 minutes. So I guess you'd have to use a lot bigger battery and add a lot more weight. Props are absolutely in the image, as you can see. Standard kind of footage from a DJI O3 Air unit here, but even with the camera at the most inclined position, the props are absolutely still there. So if you do want to get the footage, you are going to have to stick an action camera on the top. Orientation, looking at the thing can be a bit tricky too, because the only thing that really differentiates the orientation is the FPV antenna. There's no LEDs or anything on here. You do have to pay attention, although let's be honest, most people aren't gonna bother with any line of sight with this thing anyway. Biggest issue for me has been a number of link quality warnings popping up when I get even small distances away from myself, and that's thanks to that antenna. But there are a number of things that I like. Apologies for the bits of the field still falling on the table. It is built like a tank. I think this would take a lot of punishment and shrug it off relatively easily. And I do like the fact that they've exposed the USB ports in here for the flight controller and also down here for the O3 Air unit. So it's relatively easy to plug in and to do everything with. It's a very different style of design with these big open arms, which means all the airflow is going through and that isn't that obstructed airflow. Like I said, maybe that is part of the reason that it's a little bit quieter than I expected. However, there are a number of things to be aware of. Beta flight modes, the way the OSD is laid out, and the fact that the rescue mode isn't set so you can fly the thing back will need to be tweaked. It'll also let you arm without a GPS lock. I think that's a bit dangerous. I think when you're going to put a GoPro on something like this, I would only allow you to arm once the GPS has locked to make sure that things like the GPS rescue would come home. A bit unusual, it's not set up when they've taken the trouble to add the GPS. Spares availability, I would check those kind of things before you order something like this. These are slightly wacky arms. If you can't get spares, if you do unfortunately snap one, I think you'd have to work very hard to do that, then you are going to be stuck. O3 unit does need to be activated. I wish they would do that. It used to be that everyone would kind of got into the habit before the O3A unit of shipping those things activated. To get to the bind button, I had to literally take this thing apart. That's not very good design. And there is the limited pitch adjustment on the O3 air unit camera. The footage we've just looked at is with it really cranked up. I was flying around at 27, 30 miles an hour. It's capable of so much more than that. The issue is, is that if you crank it over to get those higher speeds, you're just gonna be looking at the ground. The biggest issue for me though is this antenna. Um, lots and lots of link quality issues being reported. This is, in my humble opinion, a dumb place to put an antenna in a dumb orientation. If I was keeping this, I would get rid of this receiver, go and get myself a nice Matek or Beta FPV diversity setup, replace the Express LRS receiver in here and make some kind of mounting so that it was on some kind of V configuration here on the back to avoid those kind of issues because that really spoilt the enjoyment for me here.
but if you're looking for a quad that is built like a tank that flies incredibly well and if you're going to use it with the DJI system the controller itself or you're prepared to swap out the Express LRS receiver in the back this is an awful lot of fun. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.